All right, guys, welcome back. And tonight I got a little bit of a treat for some of you. Uh, some of you may not be interested in it, but for myself, this is actually quite a treat. I spent a lot of time last night getting it out of the packaging, making sure everything was put together the way it was supposed to be, checking it out, uh, engineering it to where I can use it here in the clack, because y'all know real estate is at a premium in here right now. I'm running out of space. Uh, the portable clack shack is really taking up some space. But I have, uh, I have moved some stuff around so that I can continue to do my stove covers and my, my woodworking builds. And I've got it set up to where I can use it as needed. Like I said, this is more of a, to me, this is more of a task specific machine. This is not necessarily my daily driver. Okay, this is gonna be when I wanna cut acrylic or I wanna cut something that is outside the limitations of my other machines, I have this as an option. That was my entire plan for getting one. So that's kind of where I'm looking at this machine for being. Now, like I said, the machine was sent to me, but as always guys, I'm gonna tell you the good things I like about it. I'm gonna tell you the bad things about it. I, total transparency on that. So just a waiver, I am a total rookie with the power settings on this. Okay guys, I'm going in this blind. I've did some research. I've tried to make sure I know how to adjust everything, but I'm having limited success. So stick around for a few minutes. I'm gonna move the camera over, show you how I got this thing set up, my little engineered uh, cooling system, and I'll be right back. Here it is. Never mind the big pile of craft show stuff and tools and everything that is on the clack shack, the portable shack here. But this is the only real estate I had available to set this thing for now. It's actually a rather large machine. It has a small work area, but the footprint of the machine itself is pretty, pretty huge. Uh, it does take up a lot of room. Uh, this particular one comes with a fan built into it. Uh, this compartment over here is for all of your electronics, your power supply, the motherboard, uh, and all that. Your connections for your computer is over here. Uh, it does have an external milliamp uh, meter display on the top of the machine. And I know a lot of y'all have heard this whole, you know, don't go over 70%, don't go over 70%. If you run at 100%, it'll mess your machine up. Okay, diodes, that shouldn't be an issue. With these guys, that is definitely an issue. The two things you don't want to do is run this guy up and get it really hot. So that's why the cooling is a must, okay? And before anybody points it out, yes, I'm aware I'm going to have an issue when the temperature drops uh, because this thing's got water running through it. The only thing I can come up with, guys, is I'm just going to have to, after I use it, I'm going to have to either winterize it by blowing compressed air through there to get all the water out of it or come up with some type of antifreeze solution that is safe for these things or buying an electric blanket. I'm not sure how I'm gonna go about that yet. Uh, the only other alternative I have is just to package it up, take it in the house, but I'm not sure the wife is really gonna want me bringing it in the house. We, we don't have that much space inside either. So we're gonna cross that bridge when we get to it. But for now guys, I have been playing with this thing and I just wanna kinda of show you what I have found out about it, what I like and what I don't like. What I do like is the fact that I have been able to cut clear acrylic. Now, I'm not a pro at it yet, guys. Uh, I'm still working on my settings, but we're getting there. So the first thing I wanna do, I'm just gonna navigate this, this machine around so that you can see it because the one thing about this machine is you cannot operate it with the cover open and just for safety reasons, I will not be operating it with the cover open. So I'm just gonna navigate this thing around, let you see it move, listen to it move. Uh, it's, it's, it's got a nice little drag chain right there that rolls up. Uh, when the head goes back and forth, uh, you can move all the way from one side of the work area back to the other. It does not have limit switches on the outbound limitations, but it does have them on the inside, which for some reason it didn't go all the way to that one just yet. But when you home the machine, it goes back, it hits that limit switch, and then it goes back until it hits the second limit switch, and then it kind of comes back out, goes back in, comes back out, goes back in, and that is the rest in position. Uh, the little pointer laser, that guy, let me test it today and see how it's doing. That guy, and the way you test that is, I put a piece of wood up here, got the dot shining, 
and then close the lid. Once you close the lid, you can fire it. And this little button right here fires the laser. You just bump it, it fires the laser, makes a hole. I have got that thing, let's see, it's hard to see with the red dot shining there. I have got it probably about two millimeters below where the actual dot is hitting. Uh, and you can see it's making a very, very small dot. So, and that's with the power here. When you, when you use this button, it uses the power that this knob is set to because you're basically directly controlling the machine. Now, if I take that, and I'm gonna go right beside that dot right there. If I take this and I roll this down to about 50%, that should be about 50% of the output. And you hit the button again, all right? So you can see here, the dot size goes down significantly. All right, so I'm gonna do it another time. I'm gonna go all the way down to I'm gonna try to take it down to like, I know it won't make a mark much below, uh, below about 20% or 30%, it gets a little, it gets a little hard to tell where the dot is. But I hit the button twice there, all right? Cause I couldn't hear anything and I don't see anything. So I've got that turned down to a quarter of the way and it's really not doing anything. So I'm gonna turn that guy up a little bit. There we go, got an output that time I heard it. So there's my, my other little tiny dot. So this varies the power from the machine. The only time it affects the laser though <clears throat> with this configuration is when you hit that button. I can change the power settings in light burn just as easily. And what I'm gonna do guys, is I'm gonna do a quick little power grid just to show you guys what this thing can do. I'm gonna use the utility inside light burn. We're going to laser tools, material test. Now I'm gonna make a small one because I don't wanna be here all day. Uh, I'm gonna do four vertical rows and four horizontal rows. I'm going to set the minimum power because I know that anything below 20, this thing's not going to, not going to do much. So, and I'm going to set the, or the minimum speed at third, whoa, no, let's go minimum speed of 100, maximum speed of 300. Uh, the power, I'm going to go with minimum power of 25%, maximum power, I am not going to 100%, I'm only going to 60. So that's going to be my, my layout. And let me preview that, make sure that's where I want it. That is correct. Uh, the text power settings, I'm going to be running at 100 millimeters per second at 60% output because I do not want to run it at 100%. And that's going to be that. So here we go, guys. Let me frame this up, make sure I'm on the, my material. And you can watch the frame. It will, it will allow you to see the frame and I'm just going to move the material to my frame to make things simple. And then I'm going to start it. And like I said, this is going to be going from 100% minimum speed 300% maximum speed, 25% minimum power to 60% maximum power. And I'm just gonna run that right quick and once it completes, we'll review. The only thing that I'm seeing is I think I missed the mark on my power settings for the text. But uh, there's the, uh, the scale. I think I'm gonna do a little bit bigger one this time and I'm gonna change that uh, I'm gonna change the power settings for the text because the text didn't turn out real well, but I'm not sure that's not setting related. So let me change the, uh, let me change the power settings for the text. I'm gonna change that down to 70 speed, 60% power. Uh, okay, so it was in, it was on the line setting, huh.
Okay. So let's frame that again. Let me let this thing take another go at it. Because apparently I messed up the settings for the text. Okay, now it is, uh, now it's doing a better job on the text. Hey, I got some good news. Uh, the temperature indicator that I thought was completely dead, not sure if whether there's a minimum temperature for it to go to sleep or what happened, but it is now working. The screen's a little, it's a little messed up, but I can tell you that it is 23.9 degrees Celsius, uh, the water is. Now, one thing that I, I, I wouldn't mind is, is, is I wouldn't mind getting away from the Celsius. So I may, if I keep this thing, uh, I may end up changing those to something that either has a selector to where I can change it or is changed by default. Or I might can flip them over and find a switch somewhere, who knows. But anyway, that went, that went well and we got my little, my little four by four power output. I, I got that uh, corrected. The problem that I had a while ago, it was online for my text settings, and I'm guessing that the power settings just wasn't substantial enough for that line to be visible. But there's my, my power output chart that I just made. So by looking at this, you can see 60%, if, if you run this thing at 60%, all through the speeds from 300 down to 100, it's a pretty consistent color. So in order to do shading and stuff like that, you're gonna wanna, you're, you're gonna wanna get over here in this area to where there is actually some color change as it goes up. And to be honest, 25% has more color variation than the rest of them. So I would do a much larger chart before I use this as my go by, but I just wanted to kind of show you how the how it burns and the color that you get and not a lot of not a lot of soot it's it's a pretty clean burn so the next thing that i want to show you is i'm going to do the same test i'm going to change the power settings slightly i'm going to go from 25 percent power to 60 which is you know where i've been at and i'm going to change the minimum speed to five, which I think is way too slow, the maximum speed to 15, and I'm going to edit the material settings to do a line, which should give me a cut test. And this is gonna be one pass on every setting. So let me go ahead and frame that out where I can position my material. All right, and I'm gonna run this. This is just gonna be a cut test and I'm gonna try not to start a fire because I do know that if I go too slow with this wood, uh, it will flame up. All right guys, one thing that I am learning about this machine is when it's cutting or engraving, you can kind of monitor the, the, the milliamps here and it'll tell you about what the percentage of the power is. Uh, the highest it went to during that little test burn was eight to nine milliamps. Uh, and as you can see, guys, I am in the market for an air assist. I had a little bit of, and I'm not going to make those fall out just yet, but I had a little bit of a flame licking issue right there. Just a little tiny flame, nothing terrible. I stayed on top of it and watched it. I'm going to bump this, just give it a good, good little bang on the counter here to see, uh, to see which ones actually fall out. Okay. So you can see the speed settings if you need to pause, rewind, whatever. There's the speed settings, but I'll go over them. All right, so this is 60% power, one pass at, that's gonna be eight millimeters per second. This, this row's 12, 15, five. And if you look at the backside, a lot of these guys are actually loose. I'm gonna go ahead and push the ones that are that are loose. I'll go ahead and push those guys out. If I can find something to push them with. So got me a got me a little toothpick here. 
So these guys are loose, all right? That one, not so much. That one, not so much. But these, all of these were, would have been acceptable cuts. So you're looking at 15 millimeters per second at 60% output. And that's probably the cleanest cut of any of these. So that's what I'm fixing to do. I'm gonna, we're gonna do a couple of cuts. And I'm gonna run it at 15 millimeters per second at 60% output and see what it does. So I'm just gonna draw me a little square. And I'm gonna set it at 15 millimeters per second at 60% output. And I'm gonna run that one pass. So I'm gonna go ahead and frame. And see guys, this is something that with the other machines using different software or having to use a controller with G-code, I, I just, I prefer this. That is why I was very insistent that the machine worked with Lightburn before I brought one into my shop. All right, so I've got that framed out and I've got it at 15 millimeters per second, 60% output, and here we go. I'm gonna watch this gauge and kind of tell you what it's showing. All right, showing eight milliamps right now. Now I do got a pretty good little flame in there. Gonna have to get an air assist. Now, it cut it, but I can tell you, you couldn't see it probably on the camera, but there was a little flame that was about that tall that was following the laser as it went around. So that could be remedied with an air assist. So I am definitely in the market. So if any of you guys have a, have a suggestion, drop that in the comment for me, guys, because I really would like somebody to give me some input to whether or not this is viable. So I'm going to... I tell you what, guys. I'm gonna run this one. Let me let me frame this guy. I'm gonna put my glasses on. Don't tell anybody I did this, especially my wife. I'm gonna stay away from the head. And I'm gonna run this guy with the lid open. And I'm gonna stand over here to the side just in case so y'all guys can see this. All right, there you go. I hope that was entertaining, guys. So there's the cut. And it is filleting this stuff, guys. I mean, with no air assist, that's the cut. It actually seems to do better on the uh, not having a flame with the door open, I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's uh, an airflow from the fan. I, 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 don't, I don't know why that is, but it, it didn't flame up it doesn't appear so I'm gonna do one more but I'm gonna do a circle this time and let you guys watch it uh, waiver guys don't do this at home I just can't stand that you can't see what the machine is actually doing with the camera so go ahead and frame that up I'm gonna circle frame this one All right, glasses on. Taking cover behind the monitor. Oh, I missed that frame. Hmm. There we go. And it's got one little snag right there but nothing two passes wouldn't have taken care of or just slow it down a little bit to like 13. So enough wood guys, you get the picture. This guys is what makes this thing have a place in my shop. All right, this is clear acrylic and I didn't have any clear acrylic because before I couldn't cut it. So I ordered me some clear acrylic and I'm just gonna show you here what the clear acrylic can do. And I'm gonna throw a little uh, shape on my workspace. 
And the one thing that I have learned about acrylic, it takes a, a, the clear, the, the other colors cut really good. But the clear takes, it takes a little persuasion. So I'm gonna set this at 13 millimeters per second, 60% output, which technically is 100% because that's as high as I'm gonna run this thing. Uh, and I'm gonna frame that out. And I'm gonna run that burn. This is uh, 13 millimeters per second at 60% output, which by the recommendations of Monport, they say don't run over 60%. So that's what we're gonna go with. And this stuff does stink. Even my little smoke eater can't keep this stuff under check. I need proper ventilation, guys, but I haven't had a chance. Whew. We won't be playing with much clear acrylic because it smells. Until I get some ventilation set up. All right, the one thing that I am learning, this clear, it, 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 it like, it's a little tacky. You have to kind of let it cool for a second because there will be little spots along the edge of it here. And it, and it makes for a really cool looking edge, but the edge, it, it, will, it will actually stick back as it cools. This piece is, it's not like hot, it's not gonna burn me, but it is very warm to the touch. So that's the cut that I just did. And I don't know if you can tell the edges or not, but that's really, I'll scratch it with my rough looking fingernail there. It's smooth, it's, 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 it's like glassed over. It's, it's, it's really, it almost looks like it was polished to a, 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 a smooth finish there, which I think is gonna be awesome for some engraved stuff. And I'm anxious to play around with that. But we're not going to spend a whole lot of time doing that tonight, guys, because I've got to do my homework and learn the settings. As you can see, this was a failed setting, okay? There is such thing as too slow with this clear acrylic. Uh, this, this, was, <laughs> this was scary because it flamed up pretty good. Uh, but luckily, I was standing there watching it. And then I got some, some X-Man little X's I made. That was to where I could test engrave power as well as cut, and of course my cut setting wasn't correct, but I, I did get it worked out as I went down. So, but that is, uh, that's what the clear looks like, guys. But these sheets here, I know y'all have seen these in my other videos. All right, you got the colors that I can cut with a diode, and then you got the ones that I can't, which are the blue, the white, let me lay these somewhere separate, you got the dark blue, failed attempt with the diode. Uh, you got the pink, failed attempts with the diode. Green will cut with the diode, red cuts with the diode, and of course black cuts with the diode. The orange, I could not cut with the diode, but look, look right there. <laughs> this guy just destroys this stuff. So, which piece do I wanna throw to the uh, wolves here? Well, first let's play with a, let's play with a little piece of black. I'm just going to show you how easy black is for this thing. I'm going to try to go up here on the top edge somewhere where it's already uh, been messed up. All right. All right, so I'm just gonna do a little circle. I'm gonna make said circle 25 by 25. Lock that guy so I can move it around without worrying about messing it up. And frame. Whoa, nope, gotta go over. All right, there we are. All right, so I'm gonna run this at 13 millimeters per second, 60% power, and I'm gonna run it one pass.
and there we go. Now, it had a little bit of a like melted part right here on the edge where it got like, or either it was, it, maybe it was just stuck because of the shape. But at 13 millimeters per second, 60% power, and like I said, it's got a nice smooth edge. It almost looks like you took and polished it. So you can slow that down and make it even, uh, even nicer. Let me shrink my circle. See how well I can aim with this thing, guys. All right, I'm gonna slow that down to 10 millimeters per second at 60% power. And I'm gonna try to cut another circle out of that one. See if I can get a drop. So that was a total, total cut. And it, uh, it didn't have a chance on that one. All right, same circle, guys. We're gonna run through these colors real quick. Just to show you, uh, for those of you like myself who have never had one of these, never got to play with one. Same, same uh, setting, 10 millimeters at 60%. And there you go. It will destroy any of these colors, guys. I'm gonna try to cut this right here where I boogered it up already. So let me... Uh, It fell out. There's your cut. Smooth edge. Like I said, it almost like it's been sanded right there. The notorious blue. I'm going to put that inside that keychain attempt. And there we go. Like I said, nice smooth edge. Hole went through. And we're gonna skip the light blue because as you can see, guys, I've been cutting angels out of it. I don't wanna waste all my material. I will show you the white because I got a little spot right there I can use. This is the notorious white that I that was kind of my villain with my other machines. I was unable to do anything with. Same power, 10 millimeters per second, 60% output. And there you go. Cut like a champ. All right, guys, I hope, uh, I hope this was interesting to you. And for those of you that have been looking into getting the CO2s, maybe this kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of what to expect. I was able, I, I'm going to keep playing with these settings. I haven't quite mastered it, but I was able to create something that I think my wife is going to like. Yes, guys, I got a little bit of light underneath it so you can kind of tell the etching. Uh, but I was able to pull off one of my snowflake ornaments on some clear. So it's got a cool little effect to it. Uh, so at the end of the day, guys, uh, the machine does well in certain situations. Now, I will say this. Uh, am I ready to throw all my other lasers out and go to this guy? No, <laughs> I'm not. 
Okay, this is, uh, but here's another, here's another little ornament I made. It's red with some clear in the back, just playing around. Uh, but in my opinion, guys, this is, if you have, if, if you're established in lasers and you have your, your other machines, it, it really depends on the use. If the use that you have for a machine is to cut acrylic, then this is the way to go. Uh, Cause it doesn't matter about what color, you can do acrylic. Now, and typically acrylic only comes in, you know, eight by 12, or I mean, you can get larger sheets, but typically you're gonna run around a 12 by 12, eight by 12 sheet of acrylic. So the bed space wouldn't be a problem. If you're like myself and you do cutting boards and odd shaped objects and things that are just hard to place, this isn't going to be the machine that you want for that. So with that said, my opinion on one of these type lasers is if, if you're into laser engraving, you like laser engraving, you got the extra money and you find that, that part of what you do would benefit by, from the ability to cut. I mean, it cuts wood too, don't get me wrong, but I'm going to be honest with you as far as wood goes, I don't do a whole lot of eight by 12 stuff. Uh, this machine, doing the the wood stuff doing images and stuff like that it does have its limitations and the one obvious limitation that i see guys is the 20 minute run uh, uh recommended run time on this thing okay some of the engraves if you get into a really detailed photo type engrave i would start getting nervous about the run time on that uh, I didn't see it. it. It never got hot doing anything that I've done tonight, but I was careful because it is a new machine. I am new with it. I haven't quite got it all figured out. I was careful to keep my power threshold down so as to try to keep the heat down, and apparently that worked. Uh, so it never really got over about 30 degrees on the power supply, and I think it was like 26 to 27 was the highest I managed to get it on the water tank, and that was with very few breaks in between little small cuts. So the limitations of this machine, of course, would be the work size of the work bed, uh, the portability of it. It's not as portable as some of the other machines. If you decide you don't want to use this machine for a few days, you've got a lot of more materials and, and things to keep up with. The size of the machine itself, you got the water tank, the cooling apparatus that you've got to keep up with, and you have to, you know, the ventilation, that's, that's pretty much across the board. But so, <sighs> If portability and, and been able to stow it away, you know, on those off months is your thing, then this is probably not going to be the machine for you. But if you're an established person with lasers and you enjoy lasers and you're comfortable with light burn and you want another light burn ready out of the box, minimal, uh, I mean, I didn't have to do anything to this thing. I set it up in a light burn and went to making smoke. I did go over it to make sure I got all the foam out of it and stuff like that from packaging and shipping. I went and looked for any obvious things that might have been loose, left unplugged, or not properly insulated, just as a precaution. Uh, but, I mean, other than just setting up the light burn, I really didn't have to do anything. Now, total noob at the settings, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm having to learn that. But if you have other machines and you want the ability to do some acrylic and bring it into your engraves and into your burns and into your, into your jobs, then this is, to me, this is the best way to go that I found uh, because you don't have to go buy a brand new machine and then instantly take and redo the board. I do look forward to a few upgrades for this one. I am in the market and will be acquiring as soon as I can make a decision, an air assist of some type. Uh, I'm thinking I'm probably going to set a shop air system up on this one as well as I did the other one and just put me a chuck on it so that I can connect my air hose uh, and use it that way because I'm going to be honest with you guys, this machine, I see it being a task specific machine. If I need to cut acrylic or uh, if I want to do, you know, maybe a couple of just little quick burns, this this will probably be what I use. The stuff that I typically do with the bandits and stuff like that, of course, the workspace isn't big enough to do those. So before you make a decision, if you don't own a laser at all, you need to think about what you're going to be using it for, uh, what your needs are as far as storage and space and all those things. And I did come up with something while I've been work out here working today, guys. I figured out how I can keep this thing out here in the shack and not worry about it freezing. 
and y'all prepare yourself. This is going to be some mind-blowing redneck ingenuity. I'm going to buy myself a fish tank heater and put it in the bucket. And I'm just going to leave the pump running. And I'm going to set that fish tank heater at like 70 degrees. You know, not enough to, because it says that the water in the tank should not be too cold, nor should it be not be too hot. So I am going to buy myself a fish tank heater that will maintain a 70 degree temperature and I'm going to drop it in that bucket. So there's my fix guys. No more trying to figure out what I'm going to do with this thing. No more electric blankets. I think that will work. 70 degree water. It says that it doesn't, you, you don't want the water to be too cold down to about 40 degrees, but you don't want the water to be too hot. So, Hey, winter time, the water will definitely stay below 70 degrees. Uh, so I can just put me a fish tank, uh, thermometer uh, heater in there, leave the pump running, keep the water circulating throughout the machine. And it'll also help make sure the tube maintains a 70 degree temperature as well. And of course, when I'm running the machine, the, the thermometer, the heater will not kick in if the water's above 70 degrees. So there's a fix. Now I just gotta get a chiller for when summer gets here. But all in all guys, like I said, I'm pleased with the performance of the machine, the craftsmanship, the quality of it. Had a little problem with that one little gauge. I guess it's got a mind of its own. It was working last I looked at it. Uh, it when it first came on, it had like some of the LCDs were black, almost like, you know, when you hit your phone or your watch and it busts the screen. But now that the machine has warmed up and it started running, it's working perfect. And let me take a picture of it. So I'll show you. I mean, it, it, I, I should have took a picture of what it looked like earlier, but earlier, it, one, it didn't work at first. And then two, when it did work, it, the screen was black. But somehow, I guess uh, it was meant to be, but somehow it has rectified itself and it is currently working as it should. Uh, I am seeing ups and downs during operation. So I do believe that it is working. Uh, the accuracy, I think is acceptable. So we're good. No need to uh, buy new ones unless that whole Celsius thing gets on my nerves. Uh, I've just got to kind of remember that, you know, 20 is 70, which is a little confusing. But so that's it for tonight, guys. Uh, Monport has mentioned that they will be giving me some links to put in the description if you're interested in those. Uh, but like I said, I am pleased. I'm glad I didn't go ahead and buy me a K40 that I had to go ahead and Frankenstein out of the out of the gate. Uh, I think this is a much more uh, a better approach because Monport does support the machines, and it's not some Frankenstein machine that I've pieced together. They did the work for me, so if I do have any problems, then their technician should be able to help me get it straightened out. So I think it's a win on that part. Uh, other than that, guys, the K40 frame. Let's face it, guys. It's, it's very popular, tried and true. Parts, accessories, and things are pretty common. Uh, I'm looking at trying to get me a honeycomb to go into the machine because currently it does not have a honeycomb in it. I wanna upgrade with a honeycomb and I'm gonna add an air assist. I'm just trying to make determinations of which ones would work best. So if any of you guys have a K40 and you've done these upgrades and you found out what the good and the bad is, please <laughs> drop me some feedback in the comments. Uh, because I'm going to research this, but I, I don't always take everything at face value. So if any of you guys can give me some honest input on, you know, what honeycombs you like and don't like and what air assist you like and don't like. It looks like I'm going to go with the cloud ray nozzle because from what I can read, you can actually just add that uh, lens cover and nozzle to the bottom and leave the factory set up in place. And then, of course, I'll keep the other uh, piece just as a spare in the event that I ever do want to change the whole thing out or something goes bad with the one that's in there. Uh, honeycombs, I'm trying to find a thinner honeycomb because of the way the focus works on this machine. Uh, and I've also looked at possibly adding an automatic bed with maybe like a switch that brings it up and down. Those are things that I would like to add to this machine because I do see it having a permanent home. As long as nothing goes really bad in the next few weeks, uh, I'm gonna have to be looking for a place to put it because this is not gonna suffice. I've gotta get this thing out of here, and so it will be losing its uh, temporary location. 
But that's it, guys. Don't forget, if you want to look at the machine, just look at the specifications on it and see what it's about and look at the price and all that. I'll drop that links and stuff that they sent me down below. And uh, if this fits your needs, then, you know, there's a link that you can use. And again, the machine was sent to me by Monport. And so there's that. And you'll see the little thing up top in the video as usual. But I am really pleased that they they offered me the opportunity to try this thing out. And so far, I'm going to give it a thumbs up especially since my little meter started working. I'm not sure what the problem was, but it has rectified itself. But until next time, guys, as always, be safe and have a good day.